I recently built this tool called the Urban Waypoint Assistant and am including it in the new version of the NPC Populator to help place waypoints in a scene. I mentioned the tool briefly in my last video and in this video we'll explain how it works and how to use it. I think this video fits in my series on Humanoid AI in Unity because sometimes AI means developing a heuristic that provides a reasonable solution to a complex task but isn't guaranteed to work perfectly in all situations. When I first released the NPC Populator in 2017, the approach I took to Waypoint Placement is that they are simply game objects and can be manually positioned using the Unity Editor. Some packages provide helpful tools for waypoint placements, such as being able to click to place them. That led me to consider how waypoint placement could be even easier. I should clarify that this tool was designed for scenes where there is kind of a rectangular layout, such as a city scene. This tool won't work well in a completely open environment like a beach or a desert or a forest. For those, you still need to place waypoints manually. When I look at a scene like this one and need to place waypoints, I would be inclined to put them at intersections because those seem like natural intermediate destinations and also where a character is likely to change direction. If the waypoints are for pedestrians instead of vehicles, then I would put the waypoints on the sidewalks. If I were setting this up for cars and trucks, I would put the waypoints in the roads. Here we can see the different nav mesh areas in different colors. So the question then is whether there is some heuristic for easily recognizing the intersections. As a first step, the Waypoint Assistant tool defines a grid over the environment with each grid cell approximately the radius of an NPC. Considering every pixel would probably be overkill. At each grid cell, a ray is cast in each of the four perpendicular directions to determine whether that ray is unimpeded and also stays on the nav mesh. There are several situations. If no directions have impeded rays, we are on some kind of isolated island, but also not an intersection. I'm showing the rays in red to indicate that they are blocked. If one direction has an unimpeded ray, we are at a dead end or terminus, but probably not an intersection. If three or four directions have unimpeded rays that are all on the nav mesh, we very well may be at an intersection. I call these points hubs. If two directions have unimpeded rays and those directions are in a straight line, it is probably not an intersection. However, if the two directions are perpendicular, it may be an intersection or a corner in either way that may be a good place to put a waypoint. So that is also a hub. One other detail is that if we identify a cluster of hub points, we want to recognize that these are connected and put just one waypoint in the cluster. That's essentially the heuristic behind the Urban Waypoint Assistant tool. As I said, results are reasonable in city scenes having perpendicular streets like this one. Much of the implementation involves tricks to optimize performance because there are a lot of calculations going on. Next, I will show how to use the Waypoint Assistant tool. Before you use the tool, you need to have a nav mesh created on your scene. I have another video with tips on how to do that. To set up the tool, simply add an empty game object to the scene and drag the Waypoint Assistant script to it. 
Then in the inspector, there are a few things to set up. Specify the radius of your nav mesh agents. By default, this is 0.5, but you may have chosen a different value. Then click this button to create the grid of test points or grid cells over the nav mesh. You need to add a waypoint object that will be cloned for each waypoint that gets automatically generated later. There is a prefab included in the NPC populator that you can use. The prefab does no more than draw a couple of gizmos in the scene view so that you can see the waypoints. You need to specify a game object in your scene that will be the parent of all your waypoints. The generated waypoints will be created under this parent. You should specify your nav mesh mask to be those nav mesh areas where your characters will most usually travel. Waypoints will only be generated in the areas that you select. So for example, if you select sidewalks and not roads, you won't get any waypoints on the roads. Select if you're seeing uses a Unity terrain object as opposed to just a plane for the ground. And if not using terrain, enter the height of your ground and either way, how far off the ground you would like your waypoints to appear. The defaults of zero and one may usually be correct. Now we are ready to begin. Check the box for draw gizmos. This will draw small cubes to represent hub points. Click on the button to calculate in scene view. To minimize the performance required by the tool, the area of your environment that is visible in the scene view is determined and calculations are only run there. The green cube gizmos are grid cells that are calculated to be hub points based on the rules that I described but you do have a couple of parameters you can adjust. The nav mesh probe parameter determines how close a grid cell needs to be to the nav mesh. If this is too low, you don't get any grid cells, but if it is too high, you will get some points that you don't want. And then more importantly, corridor distance is how long the projected rays will be. You should adjust these to get clusters of hub points that best align with where you would like to have waypoints. If you click the box called Automate Scene View Change, the region where the grid cells are calculated gets updated automatically as you scroll around the scene view, which is convenient to be able to pan around to view different parts of your scene easily. Again, hub points are recalculated only for the area visible in the scene view. In the game view, we can see which areas are visible in the scene view and therefore calculated. You have the option of generating waypoints only where there are hub points or also where there are terminus points or dead ends. The terminus points are shown as red gizmos. A connected set of hub points results in one waypoint. Terminus points that are connected to hub points do not result in additional waypoints. Only terminus points that are not connected to hub points will generate waypoints. So for example, these terminus points would result in waypoints, which makes sense. To generate waypoints, you specify a threshold of how big an area of hub and or terminus points will result in a waypoint. So in this case, I need to have at least a 3x3 three three square of hub points, but beyond that, the entire connected region of hub points will still result in just one waypoint. When waypoints are generated, the colors of the hub gizmos change, the waypoint gizmos can be seen, and the waypoint objects are generated in the hierarchy under the waypoint parent object so you can easily generate dozens or hundreds of waypoints automatically. The Delete Waypoints button 
We'll delete everything under the waypoint parent object, so use that with caution. This warning is always here to remind you. Of course, if you do delete the waypoints, you can also regenerate them again with the press of the generate button. Finally, a comment on performance. The waypoint assisted tool is pretty demanding in terms of performance because ray casts are being constantly performed in four directions from each grid point in the visible region of the nav mesh. As I mentioned, a big optimization is that the calculations are only performed for the area visible in the scene view, except when you actually generate the waypoints, at that time the entire grid needs to be calculated. There are some things you can do to manage the performance. One is that you can specify how often to run the calculations. This does not have to be every frame. For example, I have been running calculations every 20 frames, so more than every second. Another option is run the calculations at every grid cell or just every two or three grid cells. These indicators give a rough indication of when the performance may be too much for grid calculations or for drawing gizmos. These words will change from green to red if the performance is getting too, too demanding. You may run into a performance issue if you zoom out to have a larger area visible. If this indicator changes red after you zoom out, you may want to use a lower grid resolution, which is actually a larger number here. Fewer gizmos are drawn, but each is a bit bigger, and this may work better when zoomed out anyway. Sometimes, when the waypoint assistant is busy, I find the Unity editor feels sluggish, so you need to be careful about the tool's performance, just create your waypoints, and then stop using the tool. You can turn off Automate Scene View Change and draw gizmos, or better yet, just disable the whole object after you are done using the tool. Your waypoints have been generated and are in your scene. And finally, the tool is called an assistant and is not necessarily the final word on waypoint placement. After the assistant has helped with an initial placement of waypoints, feel free to move some, delete some, or add a few more. Hopefully that will take just a short time and the assistant tool will have done most of the work for you even if there are a few details that you want to tweak yourself. Just to mention again, I hope the Urban Waypoint Assistant tool helps with urban environments but probably won't work very well with freeform open environments. Please send me any comments or questions on the tool or this video. My next two videos, which should be coming soon, will be on my updated NPC populator, which I will be submitting to the Unity Asset Store soon, and then a first look at the ML Agents Unity package and how we might approach using deep reinforcement learning to control humanoid NPCs. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see those videos when they get published, and a bunch more videos after that.